Hey guys, Mo here. Welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. In today's video, we have another stimulus update, second stimulus check, and the stimulus package overall update. So over the last few weeks or so, we've been hearing a lot of uh, proposals that have been made by the Democrat. For example, this past the HEROES Act, the $3 trillion, as well as the Rent and Mortgage Cancellation Act, as well as the $2,000 a month payment. I mean, the list goes on and on. I couldn't keep up with them. Although we've been hearing a lot of different proposals by the Democrats, we haven't heard that many Republicans that actually came forward with any proposals, with the exception of Senator Mitt Romney, who actually introduced the Patriot Pay Act. But before Congress left DC, we have a senator, a Republican senator from Ohio, who actually introduced a new bill in the Senate. We haven't heard anything from the Senate, right? We've been kind of looking into the Senate and see what they do. So we have a senator from Ohio who introduced a bill that would potentially give people $450 to pretty much get them back to work. The other thing that we're going to cover is, are you thinking about a buy-in or selling your house? I got some information that you might want to take a look at it uh, before you make that decision. Without further ado, let's get started. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Over the last few weeks, I am extremely humble for the amount of support that you guys have shown me by subscribing to the channel and liking these videos so that it can go out there to more people. So I really appreciate that and thanks for doing that. And for those of you guys who are new to this channel, uh, we talk about personal finance, investment, lifestyle, and all that stuff. So if you're interested in that kind of stuff, consider subscribing to the channel and then also turn on your notification bell so that you don't miss any time I release a new video. If also, if you like my content, I would appreciate it if you give this video a thumbs up. It would absolutely help out the channel. So let's quickly talk about this proposal that's been made by this senator uh, from Ohio. Senator's name is Rob Porter. Uh, he's a Republican from Ohio. He came up with the idea of giving every single person that goes back to work uh, $450. So if you go back to work and you collect unemployment right now, you're going to get $450 on top of uh, the payment that you're going to be receiving from your employer. And the reason behind uh, this was that, you know, I mean, hey, the economy has been shut down for too long. We need to pump some money in there and as well as get people working at the same time instead of having people just sending around home and collecting unemployment. For example, some people will get some money from the state and then the federal government will give uh, $600 each week for unemployment benefit. And if you have somebody who was making, you know, $800 for a whole entire two weeks, now that person is making a lot more money than they were getting paid while they were working. So I don't blame them. You know, why would I go to work when I can paid more for not doing nothing if you don't like to work then that would that logic would make sense to you right so like i said the senator came out came out with the idea said hey if you go back to work we'll give you 450 dollars for you to go back to work um and then at the same time on top of that you're going to be collecting your regular payment from your employer you also had some uh, research that was done by the university of chicago which found that 60 to 70 percent of people that were collecting unemployment were making a lot more money than for them to sit at home and not do anything. So that's that's the problem. And the senators realize it, a lot of different lawmakers realize that that's the issue and they need to address it. And that's the purpose behind this $450. We also know that Mitch McConnell was against this idea of paying people $600 a month. So he actually wants to get rid of this whole 600, you know, federal unemployment uh, benefits. And we know that the $600 unemployment benefit from the federal government is going to be ending July 31st. And after reading different articles and looking into this issue, I don't think we'll have this $600 back um, into the next stimulus check. It also appears uh, that the White House is actually interested in this $450 uh, payment as well. Uh, here's a quick clip from Fox News uh, with the White House economic advisor, uh, Larry Cutlow, and just kind of take a look at it, what, they're, what, what he's talking about. Uh, but Rob Portman has an idea that I wonder if you think might make sense. A $450 a week back to work bonus for people. What he's trying to get at, as you know better than anyone, is that there are a lot of people not going back to work because they're getting more money on unemployment than they would if they went back to work. Is a back to work bonus the seeds of something down the road that you might get behind? It may well be. It's something we're looking at very carefully. Uh, Senator Portman uh, has a good idea. He understands incentives and disincentives. The trouble with the $600 plus up, and maybe we needed it in that emergency period, but frankly, it's a major disincentive to go back to work, and we don't want that. We want people to go back to work. Uh, 
So we're looking at that. I, I think the basic point is correct. I would also add the president is a firm supporter of the payroll uh, tax holiday uh, to year end uh, for the worker side. That's an incentive because it would increase after tax income uh, by 7.6 percent. We've already done it on the business side. Now we can do it on the worker side. So there'll be some combination. I frankly do not believe the $600 plus up will survive the next round of talks. But I think we'll have substitutes uh, to deal with that issue. So this obviously is still a proposal. Kind of a nice to hear the Republicans are actually making some sort of a proposals and they are actually in talks with the White House and all these different stuff going on. So it's a lot of good news going on. But the only down thing about this whole situation is Congress is not on session right now. They're all out on their recess still. They're not going to come back until the week, the first uh, week of June. Um, that's when we're going to see a lot more action. But right now, the capital is pretty much kind of uh, dead. There's not much going on. Okay, guys, the other thing that I uh, want to quickly go over is the, this long article that I found on the Wall Street Journal uh, this the other day. I've came across this article talking about pretty much the housing crisis that's coming up. Uh, it's talking about, you know, I mean, how people are having a hard time to refinance their houses, to try to get the equity of their houses and stuff. If you want to take a look at the whole article, I'm going to put that information in the description so you can take a look at it. So let's quickly dive in and see what this article is talking about. So here's the article uh, titled Mortgage Credit Tents creating a drag on any economic recovery so i've kind of uh I've kind of went through it already highlighted some of the key stuff that i want to take a look at and talk about this video uh but let's quickly let's quickly see let's start it from the top here so i don't know if you guys keep up with the news on the economy all that stuff a couple months ago the feds actually lowered the interest rate which a lot of people were, were kind of shocked they would think that you know since the interest rate is kind of low it would actually encourage a lot of people to buy houses and stuff but if you want to go to a lender and get a loan from a lender and the loan process actually got really really tight and they made it really tough even if you have a really good credit score and all that stuff they made some of the qualification really really tight as you can tell this uh, paragraph right here mortgage availabilities has Titan sharpened as lenders impose tough income and credit and down payment condition and drop some loan types altogether such as home equity and line of credits. As Congress passed the relief uh, bill, um, this last one, you know, they actually suspend some of the mortgage payment for up to a year, uh, giving people, you know, I mean, to just kind of take a little bit um, due to people losing their job and stuff. So they said, hey, all right, don't worry about it. Don't don't pay without it without having without congress having any plan on what they were going to do you have uh the, the two big lenders the mortgage lenders in this country it's uh Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac so let's say if you buy a house your mortgage will go through the one of those companies some of the issues that people running into uh was that people were actually asking for bearings so let me just quickly go over the, the difference between forbearance and also loan deferral up right if you deferred your payment uh you know you're asking hey I won't be able to pay any payment for the next three months. Can you defer my payment? Pretty much what you're saying is, um, I will pay my loan. Uh, I'll pay this three month that I missed the end of my loan, which a lot of people are taking advantage of that. But you, when you have forbearance, forbearance is, uh, is very dangerous. For example, I just bought my house and for some reason, if I end up not able to make a payment for, for this house and I call my lender and I say, hey, listen, can you, um, give me uh, forbearance for the next 12 months. I won't be able to make any payment. The problem with the forbearance is that you have to make that payment once that 12 month ends. Once that, that year ends, you now you have to pay back all those payments that you've met, that you've missed for that you know previous 12 month once altogether. So it just doesn't make sense why anybody would pick forbearance unless you have money saved and you're just waiting for some emergency situation to happen and you want to use that which a lot of people are having some issues because as we read through more in this article there are some people that have actually asked for bearings and they run into some issues so let's quickly look at it what i'm talking about so here's what i was talking about so you have this individual josh leisman so josh was actually kind of uh, jumping between different jobs and different projects and stuff and uh, i guess he was having some issues paying his uh, uh mortgage or his loan and his lender actually recommended that he took uh forbearance he actually signed up for it and i agreed for it and before he started missing any payment he changed his mind although he changed his mind this will still show on his credit history he went back again for 
for a new loan but the lender said hey sorry we can't approve you because you have a history of asking for forbearance in the past 12 months one of the lines that really stood up for me uh, was this right here. So JP Morgan Chase said that it will not make a loans without 20% down payment or credit score uh, above 700. And also you have Wells Fargo stopped allowing cash out refinancing loans. Okay folks, now you have like lenders like JP Morgan Chase and also Wells Fargo and many other banks are actually making lending people a uh, very tough JP Morgan Chase. They're requirement for credit score uh, was under was between 650 if you had a 650 to 700 you you, you know you were okay you were qualified but right now they're looking at 700 and above and a lot of people are in debt in this country let's be honest with each other and they really very few people have 700 and above score uh, so let's quickly get my calculator out here and let's say if you want to buy a three hundred thousand dollar home and you need to come up 20 percent you know you have to come up with sixty thousand dollars you know that's what they're looking at for a lot of people that could that could be a lot of money sixty thousand dollars and at the same time i can see why certain people are saying hey listen if you cannot come up with 20 percent, maybe you shouldn't buy a house you know uh, i can see both ways the one thing that really stood out for me uh was this guy named michael neil i think he's with this uh, urban institution i uh, think uh, think tank he said that so there are a number of borrowers particularly racial minorities who were already locked out before we came into this pandemic now the pandemic hits and we can see a new round of tightening pretty much saying that you know hey before this pandemic before we get hit this pandemic this crisis you know uh people were having a hard time like minorities trying to find a loan uh but now this pandemic actually made it even worse that's all I have for you guys today. Let me know what you guys think in terms of, do you think the housing market is going to continue to require people this harsh, harsh requirement? Or do you think, you know, the things are going to get improved? Or do you think the housing, uh, the housing crisis is going to go down because of people are asking forbearance and they're not able to come up with their payments and stuff uh, due to this pandemic or, or losing their job? Um, so what do you guys think? Let me know in the comment and also let me know what you think about this new bill about the $600 people receiving Do you think we should get $450 or should everybody get $450? What about the people that have been working this whole pandemic time, right? They should get extra $450 pack pay. So let me know what you guys uh, thoughts are in the comments and uh, as always Thanks for tuning in. If you haven't subscribed to the channel Consider subscribing to the channel and then give this video a thumbs up. Otherwise, thanks again for tuning in today. I'll see you tomorrow